So let's let's go at it. Uh, I'm really excited to you know introduce Timon, who is our next speaker from Qualcomm. Timon will introduce new methods for quantizing neural networks uh, and ADA round and Bayesian bits. Timon Blankevert is a senior staff engineer at Qualcomm, leading the model efficiency research team there. His team is developing new methods to deploy neural networks in the most energy efficient way. And before joining, before Qualcomm, actually, Timon has a degree in mathematics from the University of Leiden. And together with Max Welling, he started the deep learning startup Cypher as a spin off from the University of Amsterdam, which was successfully acquired by Qualcomm in 2017. So, all right, Timon, you can take it away. Great. Uh, thanks for that introduction. Uh, can everybody hear me? Is this working? Yep, we can hear you. Yeah. Yep. Great. Well, yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, as mentioned before, my name is Stein and I'm uh, working at Qualcomm. And we're specializing in everything model efficiency related, as you'll see in this presentation. Uh, but mostly I wanted to share two techniques with you guys that we recently published and that we found in practice to work very well to make quantization very flexible and also to make it easy to deploy to devices uh, that which we all care about. Um, as a bit of a bit of a background to this, uh, of course, the reason why we're all here in this in this workshop is because we all think that on device intelligence is, is going to be important in the future, right? Um, so Qualcomm is making a lot of chips and devices where um, the chips are embedded into all of these things like smartwatches and drones and VR headsets, etc. And um, that is, that's a very good thing to be doing, right? For privacy reasons, uh, the data can stay locally on the device. It's more reliable if it doesn't have to access the cloud. The latency is lower, et cetera, et cetera. Now, of course, one of the reasons, uh, one of the problems with this is that um, it, neural networks are incredibly expensive to run, right? Uh, not only on these devices are the neural networks too large, but often we have to run them in real time and they're in, in always on applications. Uh, so essentially what we want to do is make the, uh, the, the thermal footprint of each of these networks as small as possible, um, save the battery life of all of these devices so we can keep on playing games on our mobile phones uh, ad nauseum for the whole day. And of course, all of this brings with it a lot of storage and memory bandwidth limitations. Now, so what we're doing at Qualcomm uh, is to make the platform a lot better at executing these workloads, right? And specifically, we're doing a lot of research into compression, quantization, and compilation. And on top of it, also neural network architecture search as a bit of a separate category. Uh, like, of course, in compression, we try to figure out what are the parts of the neural network that we can actually cut out or take away. So you take any trained network that you might have worked on uh, and want to deploy to a device. Can we make the network as small as possible uh, so that we retain the high accuracy, but make this memory footprint and make the energy footprint as small as possible? Uh, we do a lot of work in compilation where we actually see like how can we actually execute the neural network and the instructions in there as, as, as efficiently as possible, taking into account all of the hardware constraints. And what I want to focus on here today is on quantization. Uh, so what we found that quantization is one of the most effective ways uh, to retain the neural network accuracy and to make it as high as possible, but getting tremendous gains when it comes to energy efficiency and latency improvements. Um, so quantizing your models, essentially what we're going to do is we take all of the weights and all of the activations that we have and make them as small as possible. So we reduce the, uh, the, the number of bits that we use for represent, representing every value that we have. Uh, this, of course, decreases the memory consumption because, well, instead of storing values of 32 bits, they go to 8 bits. The power consumption is significantly higher, uh, significantly higher for floating point operations than for integer operations. So it's not only the, the, the bit width that goes down, but also floating point is far more expensive than a fixed point. So we'll mostly be looking in this presentation at fixed point inference, so int eight uh, or int four uh, quantization. With all of these factors, of course, the latency improves. And another factor that's often uh, neglected is that also the chips that you have to make actually get to be smaller uh, because of the uh, fixed point inference that you're doing. Um, so this is of course all great. Uh, we want to quantize our neural networks as much as possible. But one of the problems is that not all neural networks quantize very easily. So you can't just take a 32-bit network, uh, run it in fixed point eight, right? And then say, well, great, we've got free power savings. So there's always some trade-off between the accuracy of the network that you're trying to run in quantized uh, format and the, uh, the, 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 the amount of bits that you're using and the accuracy. 
And on top of that, I think what's very important for many methods as well is that it's important that it's easy to apply. So, for example, um, for many methods that that uh, that help you contact your neural networks, you need a lot of data. Uh, you need to like retrain or fine tune your network. And sometimes you even need architecture changes, where some network arch architectures are not very amenable to quantization and other, others are. A step down from that is, of course, methods that require fine tuning, which we call level three methods. Um, these are fine and they, they help you improve your accuracy by a lot. But the problem is that you're adding a lot of training time and a lot of effort in the hands of the engineers in order to do this. So as Qualcomm, for example, we have, we have customers that are trying to deploy 100 neural networks to their phone. And if each of them has to be hyper-parameter tuned and changed and uh, you need to run, run a lot more training, um, that doesn't make your 8-bit solution very good, right? So you want something that's more automatic than that. Um, so for level two methods, uh, you do a bit of, uh, like you do need data. So that's, 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 that's still a requirement, but you don't do any fine tuning. So this is often called post-training quantization, where after training, you just quantize it like this. There's no hyperparameters. Uh, you just call a function somewhere and it uh, makes your network better for quantization. And of course, you can even go all the way down to level one where there's no data, uh, which is not something we often do because most people have data when they train their neural networks, but it's something that's, that's of academic interest, let's say. Uh, so in the past few years, we've, we've started publishing uh, like methods to improve these things in practice. Uh, so we had a data-free quantization paper that explores what you can do without any data, uh, just the network itself. And what I'm going to cover today is the add around paper, which is essentially a post-training quantization method that really significantly helps your weight quantization. And the Bayesian bits paper, which is a method to automatically find mixed precision in your networks. And I'll get to those later. All right, so first off, I want to introduce the other round method. Uh, so this is uh, the paper is called Up or Down, uh, Adaptive Rounding for Post-Training Quantization uh, by all these lovely folks that you see here on this slide. And the idea is that we start investigating what rounding does in a neural network. Um, so especially for the weights, what's, what we generally tend to do is we uh, look at the weights that we have, right? Like uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this normal weight matrix. And then we quantize it. And by quantizing it, we always introduce a delta W, some quantization error. Now, generally, how the quantized version of your weight matrix is found is that you um, clip your, your weight values uh, based on your representable fixed point grid, right, with a minimum and a maximum, and you round the weights to the nearest point. That sounds like the most sensible thing to do, right? Like, how could you do better than just rounding your weights to the nearest value? That, that sounds very, very reasonable. And indeed, for activations, it is, but it turns out that for weights, you can do a lot better. So is this weight rounding optimal in terms of the task loss that we have, in terms of the accuracy of our neural network? So we did a little experiment, and this was very surprising to us. So if you round, let's say, uh, you quantize the first layer of a ResNet 18 for ImageNet to four bit weights, and you round these two nearest, then you get roughly 52% accuracy. Now, was, what was surprising to us is that if you actually floor or seal uh, like all of your weights, up, so you round all of them up or all of them down, you get no performance in your network. So that actually completely breaks your neural network. And then we found that kind of surprising because uh, randomly flooring or sealing, like theoretically, would be possible to accidentally round up to that, right? If let's say all your values are rounded up just by accident, you would get incredibly poor performance, apparently. So another thing we did is let's say we round each weight up or down stochastically. So we just randomly uh, round any weight up or any weight down. And we did it a hundred times. And from that, we can pick based on the loss of the neural network, the best rounding scheme that we have. So out of the hundred random trials that we did, pick the one that gives you the best accuracy. And that actually gives you back a lot of your accuracy drop. So you, here you get 63% of your accuracy uh, instead of the 52 that we had if you just round to nearest. So that actually means that there are ways that you can round your weights either up or down that are far better than just rounding to nearest, right? So our research question here is like, how can we systematically find the best way to do this rounding? And of course, this is again in this post-training quantization setting where we don't want to do any fine tuning of the network. We just want to use a little bit of data that we run through the network to optimize it for quantization purposes. So what do we do in the paper? Uh, first, we investigate the task loss. So essentially, you have the loss at the end of your neural network here, and you're trying to find the delta W, so the rounding error that you're introducing, 
that makes the difference between your quantized network and your unquantized network as small as possible. We have, of course, your expectations taken over the data. So looking at this, we can make a Taylor series approximation, as is frequently done in the analysis of quantization. And then we get terms like this, where this is like the first order term, and this is the second order Hessian term, right? So the Jacobian and the Hessian. Now here we make two assumptions. First is that we are investigating converged models. So we can kind of ignore the gradient term because on expectation, uh, so in, in this expectation, this is actually going to be zero or close to zero. And we've also tested this later on in the method with uh, not making this assumption and still works very well. So it's not a big assumption to make at all. And the other thing is that the delta W is uh, small enough that all the high order terms don't matter. So we only analyze this Hessian, the second order term. So that's what we want to optimize. We want to find uh, where do we quantize your weights, either up or down, uh, such that we minimize the second order Hessian term. And if you do that, like you can actually look at, uh, calculate for a network, like the rest of the 18 that I showed you before, is that if you put on the x-axis this loss value, you can see how well this actually correlates with the actual accuracy at the end of your network. And although the correlation isn't perfect, right, there's still a little bit of noise in here, it's a pretty reasonable approximation. So there's quite a lot of correlation between the uh, second order loss term that we're going to try to optimize and the accuracy at the end of your network after applying the quantization. So one of the problems with this though, is that if you look at the second order term, you have to calculate this Hessian, right? And this is incredibly difficult to do. It's, 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 uh, these, these, these things become enormous. Let's say you have like a thousand parameters uh, at the end of your network it becomes like a thousand by a thousand matrix, which is quite, quite reasonable. But often we work with like a hundred thousand parameters in the layer. And then you have to have a hundred thousand by a hundred thousand matrix, making this completely infeasible to even store in memory. So you can see that if you optimize um, the rounding for this Hessian term for one layer, we can get significantly um, better accuracy than rounding by rounding to nearest. But it's just intractable to do this for all layers. So we have to make this optimization problem a little bit easier. So taking a few steps to make it easy, uh, one of the first things we do is that we um, make a layer-wise Hessian approximation. So instead of considering the full Hessian, we actually consider the Hessian per layer. And we're gonna optimize the network for quantization for each layer. So first layer one, then layer two, then layer three, et cetera. And that already makes the enormous Hessian that will be the size of the number of weights of your network, uh, the amount of weights that you would have per uh, layer. And then we further decompose it by saying, look, the Hessian is exactly the same as the uh, input that you have. Kronecker product producted with the Hessian of your loss function, um, of the Hessian with respect to your loss function of the activations. So this is basically from your activations, what is the Hessian towards your loss? And then the inputs that we have here. Making one more further approximation, and here it becomes really interesting, is that we say, look, um, if we want to do a per layer optimization, we want to make it tractable. One of the things we can assume is, let's say, uh, we don't know anything what happens here. So essentially, that's like saying uh, this term here is going to be diagonal and then constant over the full diagonal. And it seems like a very crude approximation, but in practice, we see that this works incredibly well. And the amount of information that you're throwing away is not even that large, but it makes the op optimization that you're doing very, very simple. So if you make this approximation, what we end up with is that the optimizing for the session term is roughly equal to optimizing of the uh, of this term, where delta W is, of course, your weights uh, have rounded up or down. This is this delta that we're introducing. And then your expectation of your input data uh, producted with itself. So and that, in the end, we end up with like a quadratic objective um, that, that we can optimize with all of these assumptions. And we know exactly which assumptions we made. And in the paper, we show um, how strong these assumptions are to get to this loss term. So that means we can actually optimize per layer for the quadratic loss of the output to find the delta W parameters that are best rounded. Okay, so now we've seen that we take the loss, we make a Taylor approximation and we make it easier by uh, looking at the quadratic loss term at the end of each layer and then optimizing your quantization for that. And if you do that and add like a simple taboo search algorithm on top of this, this, this problem, you see that we actually improve quantization already by a lot again. 
So for all layers, quantizing all layers to four bits in, in ResNet 18, we only get 24% accuracy. Uh, but optimizing this with a very simple solver, we get 65% accuracy, a lot closer to the original baseline of 69%. The only problem is this procedure is very expensive because the problem essentially is MP hard. Uh, what you're looking at here is like a quadratic unconstrained binary optimization problem because for each weight, you have to make a discrete decision. Are you going to run it up or down? And that's that's very difficult to optimize over. So this is this applying solvers to this is, is tricky, uh, to say the least. So what we did is we went to more uh, relaxation approaches to solve this problem, to solve the rounding uh, problem that we've posed. Do you either round your values up or down? Uh, which is kind of similar to Hopfield network methods uh, with a light, little bit of a tweak to it to make the optimization easier. So we make a continuous relaxation uh, where we actually take your original weights and then your quantized weights. And your quantized weights are basically saying, we're gonna have, we're gonna run all of your weights downwards and then add a term on top of it. Uh, that's if it's, if this term is one, there's like a parameter that's very high, like a sigmoid, uh, then we actually round up. So essentially you have a sigmoid kind of like value here, as you'll see in a bit, where zero means the value is rounded down. And if the output here is one, the value is rounded up. And with the sigmoid that we have here and uh, that we put in place, we essentially have like a continuous relaxation between the two values. So values can either be rounded up or they can be rounded down. And then in order to actually, uh, during optimization, uh, you don't want your values to stick in the middle of the sigmoid because that means that they are not actually rounded up or completely rounded down. So we add a regularization term that pushes the values to either choose zero or to choose one. And by then backpropagating through this for like the one layer, we can actually optimize this objective for the layer and then slowly relax by changing the uh, beta value here. And we can slowly relax the values by during optimization to choose zero or one. And at the end of the procedure, you'll have your choice. Either the value went up or down. And we see here that if you apply this to a network, that's a bit tricky to interpret perhaps, but uh, we see that there's actually a big change. So if you round values to nearest, uh, like if in the initial value here, or if you optimize afterwards, there's many values that change sign. So before they were rounded up, they, they started being rounded down. So many of the weights actually take completely different uh, rounding patterns than what you would see with nearest, nearest uh, uh, rounding. All right. So that's the whole procedure with all of the approximations that we're making. Now we see what in the end is that we get very significantly improved results. So if you look at all layer results here, you see that our baseline here is 69%. With the whole other round method, we actually get to within a percent of difference with having the full network in four bit weights with the post training quantization, uh, which is very exciting. So looking at some comparisons of the literature, what we see here is that uh, comparing over several networks, uh, you can see that for many of the networks, we get to roughly within a percent of accuracy at four bits uh, if the activations stay on 32 bits. Uh, even, even when you go to eight bit activations, so the full network is on four bits, weights and eight bit activations, we see that the values are very close, roughly to within a percent of accuracy drop. So that means that without any effort, right, this is like a push button method, you can just press a button and apply it to your network, uh, given a bit of data, uh, usually used a thousand to two thousand examples. We can actually get your network to four bit weights, like very significantly saving power. And comparing to some of the methods in literature, we see that across the board, this method improves better than uh, all of the other methods. The only ones that are close are this method, uh, but they do per channel quantization and we do per tensor quantization. And we see that if you apply per tensor quantization, we improve into even, even more on these numbers. Similarly, for if you would actually uh, compare to 8-bit weights, um, same story, all across the board, our method performs a lot better, uh, especially these kind of networks like you see here, uh, the difference is quite staggering. All right, so what is this about? Uh, well, we showed that the rounding is important, which is, at least to me, this was a huge surprise, that rounding to mirrors is not optimal. And with it, we also have this analytical framework to study the effect of this weight quantization and what it does um, through all of these derivations that I showed you. The method is essentially state-of-the-art for four-bit post-training weight quantization. And uh, we've also seen in practice that this help, this works on many customer models. So the, 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 the other one method itself we've, this was battle-tested on many networks that came out of uh, customers that are trying to deploy their networks on our chips. 
And you see here that uh, many of the weight quantization issues that occurred were solved by this, like very significantly solved with accuracies almost as close to the original method, uh, even for things like 8-bit. So it's not only that we can get networks to work on 4-bit weights, but also on 8-bit, it, it performs significantly better. It's also very computationally fast. So it's, it's ran generally within an hour or so for any network. And like I said, it has no hyperparameter. So you just turn it on and wait for an hour, go get a coffee, and then your network is optimized for conversation, which is kind of, kind of fun. And uh, not a few things we show in the paper. So if you want to go, go look at it at the paper, there's, there's some quite some interesting tidbits in there for the rest. Uh, but we really only need a small amount of label, uh, a small amount of data, so like a few thousand examples. And we even, it's fine if it's unlabeled. So as long as the input data is roughly similar to the data that you would be using for your application, the method works because there's no label information being used. And we've even shown in the paper that you can use data from different data sets. So as long as the domain is roughly the same, like images, for example, uh, we see that the method is very robust to like shifts in domains of what kind of data that you're using. So that also indicates that the method itself is very robust. And the reason for it is because we do this per layer optimization and we kind of like ignore all of the other information of the network. All right, I hope that was um, easy enough to, to digest in a short amount of time. So now I want to turn and introduce the Bayesian bits paper, uh, which is another exciting paper that, that, that uh, kind of pushes the boundaries of quantization even further. So what we do in this paper is that we actually look at a, uh, this is a post, like not a post-training conversation method, but a method that uses a lot of fine tuning to optimize your network. Uh, but what we're essentially looking at is um, the problem that, or the opportunity, I guess, that different tensors in your network and different activations have different noise sensitivities. So for example, we know that the first and last layer in neural networks are often more sensitive to noise being added due to quantization than layers in the middle of the network. So that's something we can exploit, right, for efficiency purposes. So what we're going to do is, um, essentially, we're going to do mixed precision uh, quantization. So we want to have some of the weights in 4 bits or 2 bits or 8 bits, and some of the activations in 2 bits or 4 bits or 8 bits, and then find the optimal setting for the bit widths per layer. So some layers hopefully turn out to be uh, uh, very sensitive to noise. So you want to keep them in a high bit width. So these will be 8 or 16 bits. And some layers you would want to have in a very low bit width because they're very resilient to the noise that you're introducing. And of course, one of the restrictions that we have is that generally when you're deploying these kind of things to hardware, um, much of the hardware works efficiently in powers of two um, uh, bit widths. So you want to have something that works for, let's say, 1 bit, 2 bit, 4 bit, 8 bit, and 16 bit. And there's also some other mixed precision methods out there that say, oh, you can use 7.4 bits for this layer, right? But there's no way that you can get your hardware to run all of this. So we consider only uh, powers of two bit widths. Now, the difficulty of this is that if you um, want to explore this data space and try each of the bit widths that you have, the amount of configurations that you could have for your setting the bit widths for each of the layers is, is enormous. It's the amount of bit widths that you want to explore and to the power of the number of layers that you have. So we have to do something smart to figure out the optimal bit width setting for each layer. And that's actually, actually what we do with Bayesian bits. It's a method to efficiently find the mixed precision, uh, precision settings. And as a added free bonus, um, it also does pruning of the network automatically. All right, so what is underlying this? Um, this is pretty cool, in my opinion. So if you do a quantization uh, to any number of bit widths, you can actually decompose it into multiple steps. So let's say we do two bit quantization as seen here. So these are the original weight values. And in green, we show what the representable points are if you did like two bit quantization with a min and a max here. And of course you have two bits, of like one bit of values left, so one here and one here. And then the step size, the scaling size here is S2. So that's the difference between these points. And we can write, uh, any number, or you can quantize any number to these values by, let's say, by saying we round them to nearest, as we did before, right? Uh, or we didn't want to do before. And then applying a the scaling factor again. So any value x can be represented in two bits as this value x2. Now we want to go to four bit representation, and uh, generally that's done in the same, but your scaling differences are going to be smaller, right? Because you have the step size is going to be smaller here. And we want to decompose it so that we can write the four-bit quantization scheme in terms of the quantization scheme here with these bits. 
and then decompose the extra terms that are lying underneath here. So we have the two bit grid points and the four bit grid points. So how do we do that? Um, we encode the residual that happens after quantization. So let's say we have a value here that we quantize downwards to this value. Then there's going to be an error that we're making, right? From this point to this point. Now we're going to encode all of the residuals with the extra bits that we have. And that's what we call epsilon four here. So if we do that, we can write your four bit quantized value X4 as a combination of X2, when you would quantize the value to two bits and the error, the, the residual that you're encoding uh, with the added two bits on top of it. So in total here, we're using four bits, right? Two bits for this value and two bits for this value, but we've de decomposed how we actually write these, these, these uh, quantized, quantized values. And if you do that, we get the full of X4. So all of these grid points can now be represented. By, and by doing that continuously, so we can keep on applying that for even higher bit widths, we get a decomposition of the two bit values plus the error encoding the residuals uh, for the four bits, the error encoding the residual to eight bits, 16 bits, and 32 bits. Now, when we do want to do mixed precision, we want to figure out, am I going to use this value, or am I going to use this value, or am I going to use this value, and then discard everything else that comes out afterwards. So in order to learn that, we add learnable gates, Z, to each of these values. So if you want to take your 32 bits and go to 16 bits, then we can do that by turning this gate Z off. So by turning Z to zero, essentially what we're left with is just the um, values X2 to E uh, to epsilon 16, disregarding this E epsilon 32. And so we can do this for all the values and have many several, many of these learnable gates that indicate the bits that you should be using for this, uh, this, this, this layer, uh, or this weight or this activation quantization tensor. And then we can add one at the start, which is essentially going to tell you, uh, am I pruning this weight, yes or no? So by turning this gate off, um, it's essentially like quantizing something to zero bits. That means that there's no expressive power in it at all. And then the pruning gate Z2 is done per output channel, so we can prune full channels out of the network, which gives you structured pruning. And there's going to be a quantization gate of one of these C4s to uh, Z32s per tensor. And by learning these, we can set the bits with automatically. So how do we learn the gates? Uh, well, you we use some methodology from variation inference to optimize these gates, gates properly. And for all the specific details, I want to refer you to the paper because otherwise it's going to be a giant exposition. Uh, but essentially we put an auto aggressive prior on the gates, uh, which is essentially like a Bernoulli function. And then we also define the, ga the, 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 the gates in such a way that of course you don't want to assign any probability to the gates um, uh, that, that determines your four bit quantization, yes or no, if the two bit gate one is off. So that's where the auto aggressive part comes in. Uh, we want to make sure that if you if you don't turn on the two bit gate, you're also not going to turn on the four bit gate. And then there's this lambda weighing factor that we can put in the network, which is kind of nice. And uh, with this, we can insert hardware aware information into the algorithm. So if if a layer um, if quantizing a specific layer to let's say four bits is very very cheap or improves speed by a lot in the hardware. Um, or the layer is very uh, expensive, right? Like then you don't want to have it in like a very high bit width. So by adding uh, weighing terms lambda here, based on your hardware knowledge, your information, we can actually tweak the algorithm to uh, be hardware aware, essentially. So it's not something that we'll be doing in the results that I'll show, but it's something that you can do in practice. And then of course the parameters of the Bernoulli gates that are in here, like the, the, these are learnable, right? That, that's, uh, and because this is learnable, this Bernoulli gate, we can actually get to optimize. Okay, so after a lot of uh, mathematical finagering with some Bayesian statistics, what you end up with is a term uh, with the normal cost entropy loss here. And then optimizing it, you get this KL divergence term between your priors and the choices that we're making. So these Bernoulli values. And after some simple approximations you can find in the paper, uh, what we end up with is essentially the Bernoulli functions here, and we weigh uh, each of the gates by the probability that they're on. So if there's a certain probability that, that they're on, we want to weigh that down by a certain factor, uh, balancing off the complexity of the, uh, the neural network. So the more bit width you're using, the more complex your network is, and the accuracy, so the loss that we have in the network. 
And all of this is, of course, weighted by a term so we can actually make this trade off properly. Uh, and you can find how we set this in the paper itself. Now, the only thing that we need to do, uh, what's left, is that this value is, of course, like, a, like a, um, um, it's difficult to optimize because the Bernoulli function can be either zero or one and you don't get a proper gradient. And just like with the other one method, we have like a relaxed version of this that we optimize, which is called the hard concrete distribution. So in the same way with Adoran that we made the optimization smooth by adding the sigmoid, it's done here as well. So by relaxing this Bernoulli variable, we can actually backprop uh, this full loss function to the network. And each of the gate parameters will get a um, boost in terms of accuracy. So if the gate is on, uh, of course, well, your accuracy will improve. But also this loss term will increase because your network is going to be more complex. And by optimizing everything together while fine-tuning, you're finding the optimal trade-off between these two, uh, in the end, optimally selling your bit widths. So after this whole procedure, we can actually fix the gates to either zero or one after the training, and then train a little bit further uh, with the chosen network. And this gives you the exact settings for mixed precision that you would want to have. Time check, three minutes, please. Yes. It seems like we're completely excellent on time, so that's good. Um, so if you see here, uh, we have these plots with the complexity of the network measured in bit operations on the x-axis and the accuracy of the network resulting in it on the y-axis. And then these lines are like the, 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 the full solid line is the full Bayesian bits method. Now what we can, and this line I think is uh, if we only do quantization. So one of the findings that we have is that actually doing the pruning in, 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 in the loop doesn't help a lot. So you see that also these lines are the lines where you only do pruning and you keep the quantization fixed. But the learning of the mixed precision quantization boosts you from these lines to essentially these lines. And then comparing it to some of the methods in literature, um, so these are like hypothetical points uh, of the packed methods. I won't go into too much detail due to time, but let's say that these points are not very realistic and these are like the realistic points reported in their papers. And the real value that we should be comparing to is this, this point here. So this is where the differential quantization method, which used to be the state of the art of choosing mixed precision, uh, lies. And um, this is what happens if you actually rest restrict that to powers of two bit widths that we can actually use in hardware. So you see that our method outperforms these methods by quite a significant margin all across the board, and it's pretty easy to use. I'll skip this. Um, yeah, and we saw the same thing for mobile net. So generally, we see that we improve over the state of the art in uh, mixed precision quantization at the moment, and we also improve over the other round method, which makes a lot of sense. So in conclusion, uh, we introduced the Bayesian bits paper here uh, that automatically helps you choose mixed precision. So if you have some device at, uh, at, at home or in your company that uh, handles mixed precision very well, uh, please take a look at the paper. And I think you can actually use this method very well to, to optimize your network for that specific setting. Now, lastly, one of the last things I want to show before my time is completely up. Um, so we're doing a lot of research in Qualcomm, as I mentioned, and uh, we're trying to get this research out there as much as possible. So these methods like the data-free quantization that were introduced in the past, and we also presented the MC workshop last year, uh, made its way into the neural processing SDK. So that's the stuff that you use to actually deploy neural networks to a Qualcomm phone. And it also finds its way into the AI model efficiency toolkit. And other round will be in there soon as well. So we have this AI model efficiency toolkit called AMET uh, that we use to make our models small. So it's an open source project that you can find on GitHub in this link. And um, this is pretty cool. It has a lot of compression tools in it, uh, a lot of state-of-the-art methods to compress your networks, uh, tensor factorization methods, pruning methods, et cetera, and a lot of quantization methods, like the one I just described in the paper. Um, and these networks uh, can be deployed to any of the devices that you have. We've tried to test all of these methods very well. So there's a lot of the state-of-the-art in terms of compression and quantization in there supports TensorFlow and PyTorch, and perhaps best of all is developed by professional software developers. So it's completely unit tested. You can just apply it to your network and not worry about it operating yes or no. The interfaces are nice. And uh, I guess the best thing I could say about it is that many of our customers are using it to deploy their networks efficiently and quantize them and compress them. So it's like battle tested in practice. So if you don't want to worry about exactly what method am I using or how should I apply these methods, uh, use this toolkit and it'll, it'll help you uh, uh, deploy your, net your networks more efficiently. 